All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Good All Hockey Podcast. This is episode number 32. Deep into the playoffs, we just finished up with round one. Round one is done. That rhymed. And now we're going on to round two. Getting hot, getting spicy. We had some, you know, interesting knockouts of the first round, uh, which we'll get into later. But first things first, Galley, how was your weekend? Weekend was pretty good. Um, you know, Saturday kind of celebrated Cinco de Mayo. So nice. got drunk and played some uh, yard games. So yep. pretty, pretty good time then. And uh, mm-hmm. didn't end up making it out because got a little toss uh, in the yard yeah. on Saturday. And then Sunday, I uh, didn't do much at a horseman game. So that was a good time. And then did actually go out to eat on Sunday. Besides that, it was pretty, pretty chill weekend. Didn't do too nice. much. Also got a new grill setting that up. Nice. So nice. Stoked on that. How was yeah, the um, it was pretty good. I don't know if I ever responded or if we talked back. Oh, no, about next weekend, the Steelheads game, which I'm yeah. very down for. Um, yeah, but my weekend overall was pretty fun. Saturday, we celebrated some graduation parties. Um, and then after that, we went downtown, which was rough. Got trapped out in the pouring rain. Cody actually had to walk <laughs> home in the pouring rain because his phone died. And he forgot. Brutal. Yeah, Cody of this about that. If you haven't listened to that podcast yet, go check it out on our channel. Him and our buddy Tyler are doing like a, you know, headlines news kind of sports news kind of show. Um, so go follow them there. Um, click on it and find their stuff. Pretty good stuff. But yeah, overall weekend was nothing crazy. Friday went and watched some hockey at end zone. Um, oh, yeah, we saw each other there. I oh, yeah. remember when I was about to leave, I saw you just locked in on the the slots thing at the bar, the little <laughs> pole time thing. I was about to take okay. a photo, but I didn't want to get caught. No, I I didn't. My buddy Matt had uh, I won't reveal his last name, but he had a uh, he's a big fan of those machines, so yeah. he lost a decent amount of money uh, okay. over there at End Zone. But uh, yeah. sometimes he hits it. He usually yeah. goes up a lot and then loses it all. I'm like, dude, you should have oh. just cashed out when you're at like sixty dollars. Yeah. But you know, that's the way of the road with those, as uh, yeah. as Ray from Trailer Parks would say. <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely get you sucked in. But yeah, overall, good weekend. Um, good hockey to be watched. You know, Saturday, which we'll get into. Actually, it's our first one on the list. Boston and Toronto. Um, Boston, uh, you know, I have so much to say just about Toronto. <laughs> and honestly, like the first thing is just to laugh at you guys because I, I put my, you know what? I can't laugh too hard because I did put my faith in you guys. I had you in my bracket going to the second round, get knocked by the Panthers. But, geez, like, it's like there's actual script writers in the NHL. Just cannot. I don't know what it is. The Leafs just can't get past the Bruins, and especially in Game 7. They, I don't think they've won a Game 7 against the Bruins since, like, John F. Can- no, Dwight D. Eisenhower was the president the last time. No way. Beat the Bruins in the playoffs. Yep. Actually? Yeah. It's been that long. It's crazy. Um, I'm pretty sure. Might get called yeah, out if it's not dude, true. But yeah, I'm curious what that stat is. But yeah, Boston's definitely Toronto's kryptonite in the playoffs. Yep. They uh they seem to always get them. I swear, like every time in the playoffs, I swear Boston's Boston's a lock. I'm gonna be yep. very surprised if this group of players, I mean, I don't know if they're gonna be together next year necessarily yeah. all all four of that core people or that those core players at in Toronto, but I don't know if they're ever going to get past Boston. It's tough. 1959 them, but... was the last time the Leafs beat the Boston yeah, Bruins in the playoffs. Dwight D Eisenhower was the president. Um, There's no such thing as podcasts back then. Yeah, there weren't. Any, yeah, we were, <laughs> it was like radio shows and guys talking like this on the radio. And yeah, that's insane. 1959. Like, Dude, my, my Toronto had all the momentum at the end too. They did. Like they were they won two games in a row. Yeah, two games in a row. Ah, oh, they just they couldn't do it the last that last game. No. So so close. So close yeah. though. Like I'll I think, give it to them. Like yeah. it it went into OT game 7. That's just that's tough and especially when you're going to be playing against a player like Poster Rock. That was an electric overtime goal. Not okay, lie. yes. That was electric but also watching the replay of all the defenders on Toronto. I don't know if you've watched it or like if you saw the replay of it, but 
William Nylander and Mitch Marner basically were skating with a stick up their ass. It seemed like they were literally just gliding <laughs> through the neutral zone. And it's like, I don't know, game seven overtime. And you're just, I get it. It's a long series. You're probably tired, but they basically gave up that goal because of the lack of effort. And that's what they've been known for, especially Marner. Now he's been known for this just lackadaisical play in the playoffs. William Melander, you know, came back from his migraines, which is fair. <laughs> and I get it. Migraines when you can't. Yeah. It's a real thing. It's not. It is. It know. is. It is. It's no laughing matter. But no, yeah, it's just but, tough. It's tough. To, I mean, it's tough. The Leafs got bad luck with those those sort of injuries, you know. Yeah. And then cause... losing Austin Matthews. But it's not like. Not that they didn't do anything, but it's not like they were a total changing factor. And honestly, Pasternak wasn't. The offense in that series was not by Boston was not there. And the offense yeah. by the Leaf was not there. And I don't know that it was really defensive, but who so this is was our a... well go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna ask that. So this was a this was a hard one for me, but who's your series MVP for this? Honestly, I feel like Swayman did do his job and you know, minus those two games, but like I said, like there wasn't, it's not like he gave up a ton of goals and it was like shitty goaltending. It was yeah. more of just Boston couldn't produce offense. So I wouldn't put the, the blame on Swayman. And, you know, I think it'll care. His, his success is going to carry into this next series for the Panthers against the Panthers. And we'll get into that later. But yeah, I think yeah. Jeremy Swayman, I mean, his goals against average 1.49 in the playoffs. 950 yeah. save percentage and it went to game seven like that's not his fault yeah at all i hope they stick with swayman i think they will for the yeah. rest of the playoffs i'm sure boston fans only come at us for for saying that we should I mean, take if he has that, a couple but, bad uh, games we may as well yeah but we i have mean, another league swayman game. yeah i think swayman played lights out he's definitely my series mvp but i was gonna say brad marshawn too because i know mm, i think yeah. brad marshawn scored seven points in seven games mm-hmm. uh around that point point per game and a very low scoring series so that says yeah. a lot i think he led the whole series in points actually um but yeah also i mean i'd say i know we, were, we touched on a little bit about some of the top players in toronto not stepping up too much but i mean Tavares was another player yeah that went like two points and seven games played that's tough mm-hmm. and i think this is the second second year third year that Tavares has got knocked out for the leafs so yeah. um tough looks oh, i think he, he only he has the two OT winner last year yeah i think he, again, he has two playoff wins in his whole career so oh. is john Tavares the problem should they move them in the off season who knows i mean should they move marner i mean it's interesting to see what's going to happen with toronto because yeah there's a lot of I talk think, but i feel like it's just yeah. toronto media in my opinion that is true and i think we could have a whole episode on what the toronto maple Leafs could do <laughs> next in the off season when you know we got some slower stuff but yeah, I think ultimately, I don't think you got to blow it up, but I do think some of those core four players or the sore four, as everyone calling them, um, I think some of those players just have to move. And it's going to be, you can't get rid of Matthews, but if you're not getting any success, he's going to leave after three years. That's why he signed that three-year deal. He could have signed an $8 million times $15 million, but obviously they couldn't afford that. But um yeah, he he took that short term deal to see. I think if they're going to have some success, and you know, we'll see. But what do you think they need to do? Are they going to blow it up, retool, or rebuild? <sighs> I guess. The same. I mean, I feel like they're going to retool more than anything. Yeah. I think one or two of these players, at most, two of them are probably going to leave the Leafs. I don't think they're going to blow it up too hard, like the Flames no. did necessarily. Yeah. I think Brad Trey Living's kind of an, a GM too. That's more conservative when it comes to that approach. I mean, he's only been mm-hmm. their GM for two years, I want to say. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is his second year in. I think he's going to keep continuing working with this group. But, I mean, I, I do know a lot of Leafs fans think that their defense core got a lot better because of Brad Trey Living. Say it, it did somewhat, but I still think it needs some work. And even at the goaltending position, too, I think to make a deep run, they're going to really need that goaltending aspect. So, I mean, that's... That's all I got to say about Toronto. I think we could do a whole episode too. About it. Yeah, no, we really could. Um, but yeah, uh, out of the East, I mean, yeah, I think overall those Eastern Conference playoffs, I would say probably that's the best one. I mean, that was the only one that didn't go to like five or they went past yeah, six games. Definitely. 
Um, but out of the West, we had, you know, a little bit more of a, some challenging. This one was pretty easy. Yeah. The Avalanche, <clears throat> Colorado, Winnipeg, they won it four to one. Um, I did call it my bracket. I didn't think Winnipeg was going to do it because of how highly stouted they were. Everyone thought they're four and zero in the season series. And to me, I don't know in the playoffs, you just have like this yeah, expectation. Yeah. And it is different. Yeah. And you know, you get to play this team seven times. It's not, you know, in the season series, yeah, you could be four and zero, but you don't know how many times you had a double, um, a back to back game that you were playing someone. And then, not to mention you have, I don't know, maybe an injury here and there. Um, but in the playoffs, it's just different. So, honestly, I did think it's a shock, though, that Colorado was able to take it so easily, especially yeah. after that first game that went 7-6, to six, where it seems like Georgiev was just not going to play well. But, I mean, Hellebuck didn't really show up either for them. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah, Georgiev stepped up i thought at that first game i was like oh my gosh this is going to be some yeah. high scoring games but i mean gorgiev definitely kept the you know winnipeg jets from scoring a lot i mean i think their top score i want to say was five or six points i mean which was nothing compared to abs had two players with eight points in the car with nine points um i could be wrong about that i think they might have all been tied with eight points but Either one of those. But yeah, huge shock for Winnipeg. I had them freaking winning my bracket. So my bracket's completely busted. <laughs> um, like, thanks, Winnipeg. I actually yeah. put trust. I thought they were just like a dark horse and like they, they seemed like they were a good, yeah. uh, you know, playoff team. But I mean, there's team, there's players that just didn't step up for them. Like Tyler Toffoli was one of those players. I mean, he had two points. And then Sean Monahan, too. I think Sean Monahan only had one point. So I mean, those players they brought in. That Those is flame players. experience. Yeah, Flames players, experience players. Yeah, were kind of ghosts in this this playoff series. So they were, which is, I mean, it's so tough. The play like Stanley Cup is the hardest trophy to win in all of sports, and I'll stand by that and die on that. Um, yeah, I think out of everything, oh my God, Florida. Oh, sorry, I'm watching the game, dude. I'm like game behind. one. Are you? I've got a minute eight left on the power play for Florida. What do you have? Let's see, I just refreshed. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm on it now. Yeah, I think <laughs> out of that, I was I was shocked that Winnipeg dropped the ball like that. And you know, Colorado's a good team though, so it's not like you know they yeah. totally choked it. It's it's tough to say that you know, yeah, you have one of the greatest goaltenders this season. But again, long play, long long regular season, but the playoffs are different. I feel like but, there's always a team like the Jets, like every playoffs that's going in yeah. really highly, like promised to to mm -hmm. do good. And yeah, they just don't do as well. But yeah, they I got mean, killed. It wasn't even like, you know, Boston last year at least had some, they were up 3 1, just choked the yeah. lead, but they straight up did nothing. I mean, um, yeah, 100%. I mean, to, to wrap this up, I mean, it's crazy that that avalanche offense just looks so dangerous like i yeah. feel like they're going to continue to look dangerous they're somewhat the team to beat in the west i mean how handily they beat the jets which i think is a surprise to everyone and i mean for my series mvp it was it was hard between mckinnon um and mccarr specifically but yeah, yeah i'd probably give it to to mckinnon just because i think he stood out the most it was hard. McCarr did too, though, is the thing. Yeah. No, he did. Awesome. I, I would have given it to both of them. But yeah. I'll McKinnon. give him my series MVP uh, <laughs> one then because, yeah, I thought he had a great series. Um, but, yeah, on the Ghost, honestly, I'd give it to Hellebook. It's kind of an obvious pick. But he's like, yeah. you have to show up as a goaltender like that. You have to show up. And he didn't. Yeah. I mean, one in four, five goals against average. Oof, mm -hmm. You're not going to win with that. So, I mean, that's, no. a, that's a good pick. But I'd say Roman, or not Roman Yossi, Tyler Toffoli. Um, yeah. He was one of those players I mentioned before. I think he was yep. kind of a ghost in this series somewhat, which, which I feel like he's a very good con contributor to, yeah. you know, offenses when they, especially teams that trade for him. So, yeah. In the no, regular season, sure. he was there at least. So, yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comments what you think out of that series and all these series going forward. Oh yeah. Um, let us know what you think if you disagree. If you have your own series MVP that we missed or ghost, an underrated one, let us know. Yeah, if you if you completely disagree with my my pick. Yeah. 
Yeah, let me know. Too. If you think that we're idiots, go ahead, let us know. <laughs> but Vancouver, Nashville, um, you know, this is one I was kind of hoping that the Predators could put up a little bit more of a fight. Um, you know, obviously yeah. they're down 3-1. Oh my God, Bob. Oh, Pashnak. Breakaway. Yeah. Um, you see, you that? see that? that? I saw you hold your yeah. breath. I wasn't sure if that was it. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh. but, yeah. Um, Down the head. <laughs> yeah. But Vancouver, yeah, they definitely... I, I, I feel bad for Nashville. They had a good end of their regular season and they got some good luck with some goalies going down for Vancouver. Um, not that that's a good thing. That kind of sounds mean. But um, they, had, they had it going their way that they had those goalies go down with injury. Um, yeah. And, you know, these Demko and DeSmith both played pretty well and got injured. But I mean, Arthur's, how do you say his name? Silvos? Arthur's Silvos. Yeah. Silvos. Yeah. Yeah. He played great in those games that he had left. Um, yeah. I thought he did well. And yeah. Ultimately, I just feel bad yeah. that, not feel bad, but Nashville needed to take, they didn't yeah. step up. They didn't I mean, up. I think the Predators winning that first of the two games when they were in Vancouver was huge for them. And especially, yeah. I mean, like you said, getting that good luck. But yeah, Artur Silovs kind of came in, was the hero for Vancouver somewhat. I mean, yeah. I feel like uh, Canucks fans were a little bit afraid maybe game two. I don't know if I'd say that as much because Vancouver did look like the dominant team. Um, yeah, I just think the, the biggest question is like, is are they going to be legit throughout the playoffs with a 23 year old with no NHL playoff experience. I mean, Arthur Silovs looked very good, but is it going to continue that, um, especially against a star studded roster that Oilers have next series? Yeah. So, yeah. No, we'll see how they do in this next round, which we will get into. Um, but another one of my, I don't even like it's tough. I, I, I don't. Philip Forsberg for me didn't play bad. I feel like he was kind of needed to step up a bit more, and Roman Yossi too. Um, I feel like I mean Philip had six points in six games played. Oh, sorry guys, listeners, we're watching this game live and there's some action going on. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, who who's your series MVP and ghost? Um, I've been mentioning him a lot, Arthur Silov. I mean, yep. uh, Silovs whatever, whatever it is, that Latvian that's 23 years old, five goals against all series. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, especially to do as um, playoff, you know, a player with little to none playoff mm-hmm. experience. So, um, you know, he definitely helped the Canucks out when they were down bad. I think people were like, Oh my gosh, is this kid going to be able to do it? And he pulled it off. Yeah. So definitely gets the MP- MVP for that, for this series. And then like goes to the series was probably Rowan Yossi three points. I mean, out of the, that six game series, him probably being their best player I and mean, toss up between him and Forsberg uh, only scoring, you know, in half of those games, that's, that's going to be tough for, for the team overall. And especially how much of a point getter he was during the season. So that was kind of a, it's kind of hard for me to give it to, you know, anyone else sorrow, sir. But I mean, that's probably, probably my, my picks. What about you? What's your MVP? Um, I don't really know. It, I didn't watch this series a whole lot. Um, I give it to Silovs as well, however you say his name. Um, but I feel like Nashville as a whole was a ghost. Like there really wasn't much. I don't know. I feel like they had more production in the regular season and were playing a lot better. Um, but definitely, yeah. We'll move on to the next one. Uh, we want to make sure we can get to the next round. We don't. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. But. Edmonton and LA is our next one. Edmonton, yeah. I think Molly Wops, the freaking Kings, um, which I know you hate Edmonton and I hate LA. So kind of battle the, the hatreds. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think the Kings, they've just ran into the Oilers in the first round the past two years now. Um, I don't think that, I feel like the Pacific is pretty weak Oof. in a sense. And they got that third spot. I don't. I don't think the Kings are what they were back in 2014. Yeah, um, definitely. You know, they still I don't have... think they were that. Yeah, that deserving of like a playoff spot necessarily. No. no. Um, I mean, they got in. They, they squeaked did. in. Yeah. I think I would. I wouldn't say even squeaked in, but they got in pretty fairly. But I mean, compared to some of the other teams, even maybe even some of the other teams that were on the bubble. So. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, Vegas getting that wild card spot, you know, if this was a different, if Vegas had taken that three spot against the Kings, and the Kings had to play the Stars, I feel like Edmonton and Vegas probably would have, uh, I don't know. We won't know because yeah, that would have been in, gone. That but, would have been an interesting matchup yeah, for sure. It would have. Um, but yeah, Edmonton and Vancouver being the last two Canadian teams, obviously playing next round to each other. So yeah. we'll see who's left in Canada. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, like LA goalie, goalie wise is not that strong. Stuart Skinner honestly did not play horrible. Yeah. Um, and I think David Riddick played very good for the Kings. Like, I will say that. Yeah. I think he was a very good goalie. I don't think he's the best option for a starter. And the Flames no. kind of dibbled and dabbled with him being kind of the one-two punch for a couple yeah. of years. Um, but, yeah, David Riddick played played decent for the Kings. But, yeah, I don't think he's, yeah. like, the solid starter for the Kings. No. Neither is Cam Talbot. So Yeah. Yeah. And that's just kind of how it goes. Um, the series MVP, I'm going to have to ride with yours, McDavid. 12 points. It's hard yeah. to really – name anyone else 12, in five games in five games yeah. yeah that's just him um you know i i'm looking forward to this next series against vancouver yeah. i think it's going to be so good and we're going to get into it soon but who's your ghost of the series dude pierre de luc dubois i know i have mentioned him in the past i had him on my fantasy yeah. team which i unfortunately <laughs> lost that league i got second place oh. which i think it's like i think last year i got third or fourth place so it's tough yeah. finishing short i do have a banner in that league so you know oh. that's something to be proud of but yeah it's a yeah pure Luke Dubois I've mentioned him not a very good player on my fantasy team didn't play very good in this mm-hmm. series and I know that huge trade went down in the off mm-hmm. seasons which Jets and Kings both got out so yeah true I mean didn't really matter too much for no. both teams but yeah I mean scoring one point being on you know top six yeah you know not gonna cut it so that's my ghost of the series but the series we all loved I think this is probably my pick for the best series in the playoffs so far, especially the first round is Dallas Vegas. Yep. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, I, I didn't really touch on it. Who's your ghost of the series? Did you have anyone? No, Pierre looked to ball with one point. You can't go with anyone else. And honestly, <laughs> yeah. like that one thing I'll say, that trade is just hilarious to me because, you know, the Kings thought they were cooking on that and clearly <laughs> did not pay off in the long run. But that's the game that's hockey you know sometimes it's going to pay off sometimes it won't you take gambles here and there and sometimes those gambles pay off those parlays those eight leg par wow damn it boston just scored four to one oh my gosh Um, we'll get into it (laughs) soon i have a lot to say about this series but first dallas vegas honestly yes best first round series obviously going to game seven it was Towards the end, it was very low scoring, um, you know. But geez, that, it was it was a close close game. Game seven, what was the final score? I think it was one to zero with like an empty net, maybe. The two zero. Uh, I think it was two, two one or two, no one. two one. Yeah, I'm gonna say yes. Yeah, last night's game, are you saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was I a low remember. scoring, low scoring yeah. game though, no low doubt. Low scoring game. Yeah, and yeah, two one. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. The the Knights tweeted today saying no longer the defending Stanley Cup champions, which Oof. brightened my day today. Um, yeah, but, did you see Mark Stone's say, Mark Stone's no. comment? What he say? about uh, how he said they probably would have been better, or they probably would have been better putting themselves like in a better situation in the regular season. I think that's just kind of ironic and funny that he said that though. Yeah, just because. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe if you didn't get hurt, buddy, like every February they need their captain on the ice and you guys probably would be in a good spot. But again, it's like that. I kind of, not that the Knights played bad. I thought a first off, this could have been a Western conference finals. It was a re- yeah, rematch of definitely. last year's Western conference finals. I think Dallas is a better team this year than they were last year, especially Jake Ottinger, who was a freaking brick wall for them, for the, the stars. Um, you know, Wyatt Johnson having a great, great, uh, great playoff series, getting that goal last night as well. Starting yeah. it off 1 0. You know, it's just one of those things. And I said it in the beginning of the, when this trade deadline happened, is it's tough. It happened to the Rangers. It's tough to build this super team of all these players when they really don't have a whole lot of chemistry. They've been playing together for maybe a month and a half. Yeah. And you play That's a true. team like I, the Stars. 
who's been buzzing all season fighting for yeah. the number one spot in, in the previous Central. seasons. I mean, their, their, yep. their team has been, been around. I mean, they're somewhat of a new luck team this year. I think they look a lot stronger. They, they do. look pretty dangerous though. I mean, that they, 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 they beat the, the Knights, the defending champions in this seven game series. And um, I think it was, the, yeah, it was one of two game, series to go to seven. So, Mm-hmm. That definitely shows they've played the most games. They've had the most experience and feel of what this playoffs is like. Yeah. They've faced some adversity. So, I mean, um, I mean, going down 0-2, I think a lot of people were, like, counting the stars out of it. Like, oh, shit, here comes the Knights again. Yep. But yep. props to them for coming back. And, um, you know, I think there were some star players that stood out. The MVP for me was Wyatt Johnson. I mean, getting yeah. seven points, four goals, mm-hmm. three assists. And some of those games pretty low scoring. And, um, you know, he he was Dallas's crucial offensive player. Yeah. Um, I feel like there's not really like too much of a superstar. Jason Robertson would probably be, mm-hmm. you know, the one player for me that I'd say is the biggest superstar on the Dallas Stars, maybe besides Ottinger. But yeah, yeah, no, it's it's uh it's good for the Dallas Stars that their their players are scoring right now. So yeah. My series MVP, I'm gonna give it to Ottinger. Um he had seven games played. 1.95 goals against average, 0.9925 save percentage, which is really good. Um, like he he was just he was making crucial saves for them, especially later in the series. Obviously, that slow start that the the stars had in the series, but you know, it just goes to show you that you know you go up 2-0, it doesn't mean anything. It does not mean anything. Um, obviously, yeah. stars coming back in those last game three and game four, and then winning again in game six, like. It's just it's momentum train, and the minute you get off of it, someone else gets on it. So it is tough, and you know we're gonna see. I think this second round is gonna be insanely good. Just looking at these teams, so four to Boston out of the top right quadrant, we'll say the bracket. We got Dallas and Colorado up here, and then Vancouver and Edmonton and New York, Carolina. Um, I mean, I think every single one of these teams is deserving of being here on this list. Definitely. Um, you know, obviously they won a playoff series, but there's no like, oh my gosh, how are they squeaking out here? Um, you know, yeah. every team on here did well in the regular season and we expected them to be where they're at right now. Um, yeah. So, well, I do want to touch on my ghost of the series for that Vegas. Oh, uh, yeah. Dallas yeah. Sorry. Series. Go back. Yep. No, no. I think uh, I, I just know this is, you're not going to be too happy with this one, but Thomas Hurdle is probably my. Like goes to the series. I mean, getting only one assist yeah. in those seven yep. games. I, I just feel like I'd expect more from him because he's a really yeah. good player, you know. He is, but um, he's also but maybe been he's out just, of yeah. Yeah, he might just be fitting into their system more or that less too. and coming back yeah. from an injury, you know. But yeah, that too. I yeah, I think Pavelski had a pretty slow se- or slow series as well. True. Um which, you know, obviously they won and he's also 39 years old and it's not to say that he played bad. Like he was in the right position and everything. So it's not that he played bad or anything, but for hurdle, I love the guy, but also he went to Vegas. So it's, <laughs> it's tough for me. I'm like, do I want to see him do well in the, but the Knights do well overall, like, you know, I think there's always next year for him to do well in the playoffs. He has had experience when he was younger in the playoffs with, you know, the monster that the, sharks kind of were at least in the regular season not the playoffs but yeah. um yeah so we'll see if he can turn it on next next series but uh into this next we're gonna break down all the series that are coming up oh yeah we're gonna give our picks at the end so florida and boston is the one we're watching right now um game one for monday i think game two is on wednesday when this episode is dropping yeah Right now, it's not looking good for the Cats. It's four to one, but if I know anything about them Oof. versus Oof, Boston, yeah. this game might not mean much. So the thing for me in this series, and the thing that has kind of scared me as a resident Panthers fan in the playoffs, since the Sharks aren't in it, <laughs> um, I'll say Panthers rooting for. I guess I'm not going to call myself a Panthers fan, but I'm definitely going to root for them in the playoffs, and I have them in my bracket too. So. Honestly, I think the tough thing for them right now in this moment is that Boston has played seven games and they've been pl- the last yeah. game they played was Saturday, two days ago. Panthers won last Monday when we recorded last. So 
you know, it's one of those things where Boston's riding hot. They're, you know, they are. And especially they just, like they're, they're four no in the season series, um, they are. which I yep. think is, is that's crazy, man. I yeah. mean, being four no is, is, you know, I think that's going to be, that's, is that going to carry on into, you know, playoffs? And right now, you know who I mean, else was four it's looking in the like season it. series. Okay. Let's do a little connection here. You know who else was four yeah. no in the series and killed the other team? Yeah. In game the, one was the Winnipeg Jets, and look yeah, what happened to the Winnipeg them. Jets. So, and I still got but, faith in the Panthers. I mean, Boston is off quite a bit. They, they're yeah. looking like they're going to take this game one. It's crazy that thirty six shots for for Florida, and they've only scored one. Jeremy Swayman, you know, 30, 35 saves scary. for Journey Jeremy Swayman. So shout yeah. out him. Yeah, no, he uh, he's going to be playing great, and for Boston to win this series, he needs to keep playing like that. And you know, Bobrovsky. Okay. Also needs to do the same. He's made a couple good saves here and there. I just saw a replay of Jeremy Swayman's play. And honestly, this game, he's he's been lights out. He's been playing good so yeah. far. So he needs to keep doing that for them. Um, but again, it's game one. Not that it doesn't yeah. mean anything, but maybe the Panthers just need to find that spark again. Because it, it's it's tough. It's tough to go a week again yeah. without a game. And then your opponent been playing for the last week. I, yeah, I feel like the Panthers gotta take one of the two, first two games. Though yeah. you don't want to go back to Boston down 2-0. I just feel no. like Boston's gonna at least take one of those home games, in mm-hmm. my opinion. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think Florida has definitely the right formula to to make it to a cup. So, I mean, yeah, I think year. they just they will. This is gonna be a good series. I mean, yeah. I wonder if it's gonna be kind of a shootout or if it's gonna be very low, low scoring, just because. Boston's yeah. kind of like that, so I mean, it's it's already somewhat low scoring right now, but yeah, I'm I'm excited for this series to continue on and see if yeah Boston's actually uh, legit. So yeah, or I think this so. this game should be a splash of cold water in the face of the Panthers, wake them up a bit. Um, obviously, losing all well, game's not over yet; they could come back. Um, It'd be crazy if they did. It's possible if anyone can do it, it's them. We've seen it them do it against Boston, so. You know, this series is going to be interesting. We'll see how it unfolds. And hopefully yeah. next week, we'll, who knows what it'll be at. But yeah, rematch of last season, last year's first round, which obviously Boston went up 3 1, choked the lead. Um, so, you know, whatever this series is at, even if Florida's up 3 1, I wouldn't count the Bruins out to not come yeah. back. So Definitely. these it's are going to be two a hard great series. Teams. Yes, 100%. Next one, New York, Carolina. They've already played one game one yesterday. Um, New York is two and one in the season series against Carolina. And they also took game one yesterday, which Carolina did put up a fight towards the end. Um, I do have a feeling this is going to be a low scoring series. Um, yeah, definitely. See a great goalie in Shesterkin and Freddie Anderson's been playing pretty well too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's weird. I feel like this is this could be one of those series that people assume is going to be low scoring, but like, there's a, the, both of these offenses are can get very high scoring. So mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see if any of these goalies are going to break down. Because I feel like yeah. if you open the floodgates against either the Canes or the Rangers, oof, like they're gonna they're gonna steamroll you offensively. So um, mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see if anyone lets them down. And the both these teams played pretty weak teams i mean the capitals not that crazy of an offense yeah and i mean especially the islanders too so yeah um i mean coming into it, it's going to be more of a test for these goalies and kind of test them they're they're legit because yeah. freddie anderson man just sturkin both look excellent they but do one of the one of the goalies is going to have to probably give or it's going to be very low scoring so yeah we'll see about this yeah no we, we shall see we shall see but We'll, we'll give our picks after. I was going to say it, but I'll, I'll yeah. wait. I'll wait. <laughs> Dallas and Colorado. This oh, one, yeah. I think, is going to be another great series. The Stars are one and three versus Colorado in the regular season. So Yeah, that's crazy. Obviously, they were fighting for that one seed spot the entire year. Um, Dallas obviously got it, but, you know, Avalanche just knocked off the Jets. And, again, for Colorado, this is a team that won – I don't know if it's it's probably a little bit less than a week, but by the time they play, it'll probably be a week since they've played. And Dallas just yeah beat the defending Stanley Cup champions, and that locker room is you know pretty high strung or not high strung. They're you know they're dialed in. They're they're playing. They're playing hockey. Most definitely. It's just it's so tough 
to go like I'd rather take a seven game series. Yeah, you might risk the injury or the risk injury or you know fatigue playing a factor, but in the playoffs, these guys like they're going to be locked in and dialed in, and we're seeing what Boston's yeah. doing. So I don't know when this Stars game is. It could be tomorrow. It could be Wednesday. Um, I haven't looked. Yeah, I think I want to say it's tomorrow is when game one is yeah tomorrow's game one at a 7 30 p.m um okay. but yeah man i'm i'm stoked for this series i think this yeah. is it's tough to say what who what like what series has the best teams mm-hmm. i mean these two teams this series could definitely take it for me i'd probably say them um just because the stars in colorado and and also the abs both deserve to be there yep. they're both very dominant teams um when it comes to regular season play Mm-hmm. Um, they're somewhat like both of those, these two teams are somewhat the teams to beat in the West. So, I mean, this could totally be, um, the Western conference final. Um, yeah. but you know, we're getting it in round two, um, thanks to this playoff format, which I think some people are kind of upset about. I mean, these are some crazy matchups for, for yeah. round two. You could have an argument, um, besides probably Vancouver Edmonton that they, any of these could go to, you know, the conference final, but um, yeah, it's, I mean, I don't even know about this playoff format. It's not that it's, I like the one through eight, but I also kind of like this wild card thing. I don't, I don't mind it. Yeah. Um, It's tough, the two and the three play, but at the same time, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really tough. I mean, especially nowadays, all these teams are so good. Like every single one of these teams in the playoffs right now that I'm looking at, maybe Edmonton is the weakest in terms of like as a complete team. But obviously they have freaking Connor McDavid, so it's not going to really matter. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think the Jets getting knocked out by the Avs, huge, and then also the Stars beating the Knights. Like those are two teams that are, yeah. have shown that they are great teams um, that can compete with some of the best in the league. Yeah, and that like brings a question in my mind. I mean, what what do you think the best team in round one so far that like has been knocked out? I mean, the Jets are a pretty good argument. The Leafs are a good argument. Um, the Knights are, are also a good argument. I think it's between those three. Yeah. But, I mean, I'd say on paper and what type of team they were this year, I think the Leafs and Knights each had their flaws, but the Jets looked so strong going yeah. into the playoffs. I mean, I had they them did. winning my freaking bracket. I thought that they were going to be legit this year. Hellebuck completely shit the bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, and it's tough to completely lay the blame all on him. His team didn't support him too much more, and they're playing the Avs, who are going to absolutely wreck you. But yeah, um, the Jets are probably the best team, in my opinion, that got knocked out, which Colorado beat. So we'll see if that really makes a difference in this this next series. Because I mean, all the, some of these other teams have played pretty weak teams. We've seen so that is true. Yeah, that's a good point. I think the best team that got knocked out was honestly the Knights. They're a great yeah. team. Um, you know, they forced a game seven on a very dominant Dallas Stars team. And if this Stars team beats whoops Colorado's ass, then that gives us our answer. Um, and vice versa, too. If Colorado whoops the Stars ass, then I think we could say the Jets are one of the best teams that got knocked off. Um, definitely. But I mean, if this game goes to seven, you know, I think all three of these teams are definitely up there. The freaking Leafs, they're just. Like, it's tough to say that they're not a good team because they are. They just, yeah. I don't know what, there has to be some sort of curse out there that there's some hole, there's just holes in them. Like, I, I, yeah. I truly think their D is just not there. Um, yeah. one, but they're just, yeah. they're, they're also unlucky. They're unlucky. I think that they had a good, really good team this year. Um, yeah. I think their goaltending lacked a little bit, but I mean, Joseph Wolf stepped up. Um, so it did. I mean, I don't out. really know. He was what out it for is. game it's seven. Just, Bro, it's just unlucky. It's yeah. just unluck. Yeah. Like shitty luck for the Leafs. And I feel bad for them. But yeah, I mean, out of these three teams, yeah, definitely the Jets. But that goes on to, you know, our next series, which I'm stoked about. And this, mm-hmm. you know, speaking about the Jets getting knocked out, another Canadian team knocked out. Mm-hmm. But uh, this is the Canadian matchup. We got Vancouver versus Edmonton, which is going to be. Pretty yeah. good series, I mm-hmm. feel like. I feel like this is going to be a pretty high-scoring series, too. I don't know yeah. if uh, this Arthur Silov has it in him to continue playing lights out. We'll see, though. But uh, I think it's also crazy. Vancouver's 4-0 against the Oilers, which yep. is, um, you know, that's... I wonder if that's going to take on. into account for the offseason, which I know we've, we've had a lot of examples that... <coughs> 
you know, it's different in the playoffs, but yeah, I feel like with these two teams, they play each other enough that I don't know. We'll see. But I guess what's your take? Yeah, um, I think this is going to be very heated in terms of the fan bases, the two yeah, rivaling Canadian, you know, I mean, obviously Edmonton and Calgary would be even more electric, but Vancouver and Edmonton are definitely not friends either. And I don't know. This is going to be an interesting series for me to watch, like just to dissect everything because you look at Edmonton on paper, you know, they're not insane. They're not like a crazy defensive team. I think the Canucks have a little bit more of an edge on that. These are like two, I want to say evenly matched teams. Um, you know, yeah, nothing super in net, nothing super starish. They've got good forwards, but defense, they still have some good. They, ah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think, I think the Canucks have the Oilers all, all day yeah. on defense. I mean, they have the best yeah, defense yeah. in the league. Quinn Hughes, true. Um, Philip Ronek has stepped yeah, up big time point. this season. Yeah. I want to say he scored over 40 points. Um, I mean, there's some players that stepped up on, on defense for, for the Canucks. So I think they have them in that department, which that might be the def- deciding factor. I mean, if you can shut down McDavid and Dreisaitl in this series, you're yeah, probably going to take the dub. Yeah. So, um, and especially don't get they're playing against, yeah, they're playing against a goalie, Stuart Skinner. I don't know if he's going to continue this, this, uh, this play. Yeah. Cause I mean, the Kings are, are not as no, um, that is true. good whatsoever than the Canucks. I also think the Predators' offense was better than the Kings. So mm-hmm. um, I just feel like Vancouver might be a little bit more seasoned on, um, you know, better put together teams. So we're going to see what happens in the series. I think it's going to be high scoring series. And uh, I mean, 8 1, 8 1 was their season opener. Um, so yeah, I yeah. mean, that's a nine goal game. Yep. I wouldn't be surprised if we get uh, one of those. So smash the over in this series. Yeah, yeah. They play on Wednesday, which is interesting because they're gonna both those teams are gonna have a lot of rest. Um, yeah, big time. Which I think for whoever you are is ideal. Whatever team you are, um, you know you don't want to be. It's just I don't know. I stick to that in playoffs. Like I don't know. I've seen some stuff where people are recommending that you know maybe we go into like a football format where the one seeds get a bye week or bye series, but. Honestly, I, I I wouldn't want that as a as a one yeah, seed. I don't I, I don't want, want that, that two week period break that you get. Football's different. It's one week, you get one game, but a whole series that you get to miss out on to rest up and get to play in the second round. No, wouldn't want it. I'd hate it. Um, but yeah, honestly, for you, which series on this list here are you most excited to tune in and watch? Yeah, you know, I'd probably say Dallas and Colorado. It's going to be interesting to see who wins out of these yeah. two teams. I'm all of these series are going to be so good, but that mm-hmm. that series in particular sticks out just because I think those two teams are so dominant, and I think potentially whoever wins that series is going to make the Stanley Cup final. I'm going to call mm-hmm. that right now. Okay. So, okay. Um, you know, I think that you know playing Vancouver and Edmonton, I think those are just two different teams than Dallas and Colorado have. Yeah. Um, this season and on paper, goal pending, however you want to. I mean, Gorgiev, we'll see about Gorgiev. I mean, that might be a huge fault for for this series. But uh, yeah, yeah, man, I mean, Dallas, Colorado, that's going to be a great series. What about you, though? Honestly, Florida, Boston. I enjoy, I sure. love that series last year. It was so fun <laughs> to watch. You and and rub in Anthony's face because he was a Boston fan. And I was like, you know what? When Florida went down 3-1, I was like, damn. It really sucks. But then they won game six, game five. No. Yeah, they won. Oh, my God. They almost scored empty net. Uh, they almost won. They won game five. And then I was like, oh, my God, Florida might do it. And then, you know, they just kept forcing it, come back game seven. So I want that same electricity in this series. I think it'll go far. Um, but, yeah, that's my series to watch and one – I will be enjoying to tune in. You know, Matthew Kachuk in the playoffs is a special treat to watch. Um, yeah, definitely. You can just tell his his hunger to win. Um, especially win a Stanley Cup after last year, what happened when you get to play in the Knights and your team is literally banged up and you yourself, Matthew Kachuk, has a broken sternum or bruised sternum, whatever it was. Um, you know, that's got to light some sort of fire to do something this series so i think it'll be a fun series to watch they've got an empty net down three goals four minutes left right now so you know 
they're not letting this game get away from them because you know they know every game every game matters so we shall see okay. how this series turns out um but yeah that was my favorite one now let's get into our picks and oh, yeah. if you want to start it off give your pick give a sentence on why yeah should we just go one at a time or should we you can just rapid go fire through all of them yeah. yeah so we got florida and boston um for this i'm gonna go with uh boston i think boston ah uh, actually okay i'm gonna restart this because i was looking at my bracket and i'm like boston <laughs> damn because i got this wrong with my bracket yeah my bracket's <laughs> toast i had freaking <laughs> leafs versus lightning for this series yeah this so i mean this is such a toss-up between florida and boston man like yeah i want to say florida is gonna find a way through swayman like such a toss-up like that's is this, this yeah. one i'm having tough time figuring out but i'm still gonna just go with boston i feel like okay. they just have a gritty team swayman i think is gonna show that he's the better goaltender i think maybe historically yeah. not but this series in specific i could probably see going to six or seven but yeah. i'm gonna stick with boston i think okay. marshawn is gonna figure it out especially having taken one of these two games to at least start the series that's gonna help him out down the road so that's yeah that's my pick Sorry for taking so yeah. long on that one. That one was just like fucking no, they just took that hard for me to oh. decide, man. But uh, yeah, New York, Carolina. I'm going New York Rangers on this all the whole all the way. Um, I just feel like it's, it's their series, and Shesterkin's going to also stand out a lot for them in this series. But I think uh, you know, there's going to be some good play from the Rangers players like Panarin. So taking yeah. the New York Rangers probably in six is what I'd say. Now going to the West, Dallas versus Colorado. Um, you know, I think Dallas is going to take this series. I think this game is going to go pretty long. I think there's potential that either one of these teams might just open the floodgates, but I'm thinking this is also going to go long, which I've said about all series so far, but my last series isn't going to go long. I think Vancouver or Edmonton is going to be a quick series. I think they're going to figure each other out in the first two games and whoever is going to take it. But in this I'm going to say Vancouver is going to take it. They just have a better all-around team than Edmonton. Um, so, yeah, I got Vancouver, Dallas um, in the West Coast, and then our Western Conference, and then uh, Boston, New York, and the, the Eastern Conference. So that's my picks. What about you? Um, okay. I like those. Those are good picks. I disagree with the Boston one. I'm going to go <laughs> with Florida because I'm going to ride with them again. Not going to fall off the bandwagon yet. Um, you know, obviously, taking one game – the Panthers, you know, it's okay. They like to be the underdog. And that's what scares me about this series, that everyone is like, oh, Panthers got this. Oh, Panthers got this. But I don't know. Deep down, I am scared of Boston. They're a good team. Um, you know, they may have choked a bit against the Leafs for a little bit, but they got it done, and it's finished. So I'm going to go Florida, but it's going to go deep. It's going to go six or seven. I'll say seven. For the sake of my heart rate, probably should not go to seven, hopefully six. Or Florida, but I think it's going to go to seven. New York, Carolina. Yeah. I'm going to give it to the Rangers as well. Carolina is a great team. <clears throat> they fought their way here, but the Rangers are, you know, something else. And they needed, I think the Rangers needed this series because whoever they play next, either Florida or Boston, they need some sort of warm up. And I feel like the Capitals was not it. It's kind of just like a, you know, ooh, boo, we get an easy first round. So they needed, Interesting series here. I think this series will go to six. I don't think it'll go to seven. Um, but yeah, Rangers and six. Uh, next one, Dallas and Colorado. For the sake of my bracket, I'm going to go with Dallas. And nice. I think it's going to go six. I have Dallas going to the finals. And I'd love for Joe Pavelski to, you know, hopefully win a cup or at least get a chance to. So sticking with Dallas, I think it's going to be a hard series, though, for them. Colorado is a good team. But yeah, I think it's going to go to six. Vancouver and Edmonton, this one's a toss-up for me. I honestly want to see game one first. I want to see how the Oilers play. But it's hard to even make a judgment off of that, after one game. Um, but again, for the sake of my bracket, I'm going to go with Edmonton. And I think they're going to go to the Western Conference Finals and then lose to the Stars. But McDavid, you know, I think is out for some some blood. And he obviously ran into the Vegas Golden Knights in round two. So it's going to be tough. Now there's a full-on brawl on the game or oh, yeah, yeah. on the ice, which I love. That's what Florida does. Um, 
but Boston knows this about them last year. So we'll see, but yeah, those are my picks. Um, this round two is going to be very interesting. Um, I yeah, feel like a couple first games are going to be tough. Um, but with that being said, I'm very excited. Uh, next week we'll have another episode for you guys. We're dialing it back. I don't think that us personally can withstand doing two episodes <laughs> a week personally on the brain. And Maybe just we could do a live it. here and there. Yeah, Maybe live we'll here and there. A live and then an episode, you know, yeah. going out. Especially live. We also talk about it on Settle Down Live, some of the playoffs um, in the series in there. So if you want to listen to that, go there. But you guys have already witnessed this, and I'm so scared. But tomorrow, Tuesday, is the NHL draft lottery. <laughs> we live streamed it. If you missed it, go watch it. You can see our reactions. If the Sharks got the number one pick, you can go see how I reacted. If they didn't, and they got like third or something, you know, I'm not going to be get a- the number one pick. <laughs> That'll be the de- the death of me because you will not stop giving me <laughs> shit for it, especially in the off season. But uh, Gally and I are going to the draft this year in Vegas. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna be there, so we're watching the draft lottery to see what our fate is gonna be. Um, and if the Sharks get that first overall pick, I might just get a Celebrini jersey. We'll see. Probably not. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. So I don't even know. It's hard to really say much because you know. We don't even know what happened, but I think this draft is going to be very... Oh, that poor Florida kid. They just panned too. Yeah, I know. Like that kid was asleep. He just, I don't even think he's asleep. I think he's crying on the inside. But um, the... Yeah. So draft draft lottery. Go watch that live stream. You can watch it. You know, a little bit delayed, but you can see our reaction to everything. We'll have a couple of the other fellas on there too because they are Sharks fans um, and just be reacting to it. So yeah, be some fun stuff. 4 30 p.m mountain time which is an yeah, interesting time 4 30 p.m mountain times but that being said everyone thank you for tuning in today be sure to like and subscribe all that fun stuff all that jazz go follow us on instagram get all the updates we plug it every time we're going to continue to we're trying to hit 400 post playoffs we're at 309 10 what are we at no we're trying mm-hmm. to we're trying to hit 500 Oh, 500 we'll see okay. yeah we'll, 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 we'll see if it's gonna yeah. hit uh 500 right underneath but... galley the um, at right there, yeah. good old hockey podcast. Follow us, follow follow us. us on the IG, yep. sub to us on YouTube. You guys mm-hmm. know the vibes. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we got lots of content coming out, including our other shows. So, yeah, smash that follow or subscribe yeah. or like or yep. throw us a comment. Talk shit to yeah. me. So, talk shit to <laughs> us. We'll chirp back at you. It's fun. It's all in good fun. We don't take anything to heart. If you think we're dumbasses, we probably are. It's because we are dumbasses. We're just some fans of hockey watching and reacting. We hope you're that too, because that's the whole point of this. So, all right, guys. Well, um, I'm glad we recorded today because if the Sharks don't get the first overall pick, I'd probably be pretty depressed recording this episode <laughs> after that depressing season. And, you know, we better get something out of it. But, you know, this prospect pool is good. Off season, we'll do a little breakdown before the draft of all the potential prospects coming into the league. And with that, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.